Hello and welcome everyone to this, the sixth in the series of Legends of West Indies Cricket on Cricket 360 Friday Night Line. In this segment, we look at Geoffrey Dujon of Jamaica. Geoffrey Dujon, athletic, acrobatic, and elegant. Geoffrey Peter Leroy Dujon, born in Kingston, Jamaica in May 1956, grew up in a cricketing environment. His interest nurtured at Jamaica's Sabina Park, home of Kingston Cricket Club, for which his father, Leroy, was an opening batsman and who also played for Jamaica. Dujon was aged 25 when he was first chosen for West Indies on the 1981-82 tour of Australia. It was a long wait. Jamaica's captain in the annual West Indies Youth Championships and a member of the young West Indies team to England in 1974, Dujon, not yet 20, scored Shell Shield hundreds in his first two first class seasons in 1975 and 1976 against strong Barbados bowling attacks. Dujon is quoted as saying, The West Indies middle order batting was very strong at the time, and I realized my best way of breaking into a touring team was, at a, was as a wicket keeper who could bat. I couldn't make it if I wasn't keeping. End of quote. Rated among the greatest wicketkeeper batsmen of all time, the athletic, acrobatic, and elegant Jamaican, and now a sometime cricket commentator, played in 81 test matches and 169 ODIs for the West Indies. His prowess behind the stumps had to be honed in an era of endless fiery pace bowling by the likes of Andy Roberts, Michael Holding, Malcolm Marshall, Joel Garner, Patrick Patterson, Colin Croft, and Kirtley Ambrose, and Courtney Walsh toward the latter part of his exceptional wicketkeeping career. As a West Indies Test wicketkeeper, he effected 267 catches and scored five centuries, average 32, including the classic 130 against the Aussies at the Queen's Park Oval in 1984 with his team in trouble at 186 for six. His West Indies test batting stats also included 16 half centuries. In the 169 ODIs he played for the West Indies, he took 183 catches and effective, effected 21 stumpings behind against Australia at Melbourne. He scored his highest of 82. He stood in as captain for one ODI. His first class stats read 200 matches, 447 catches, 22 stumpings, and 21 centuries, average 39, with a highest score of 163 not out at the Queen's Park Oval for Jamaica against Trinidad and Tobago in 1993. Dujon holds the enviable distinction of never having played in a losing series in his 81 test matches that started against Australia at Melbourne on Boxing Day in December 1981. He was the 176th player to represent the West Indies in test matches. And he ended against England in August 1991, 10 years later at the Oval in England. His ODI career also had the same span in 1981, from 1981 against Pakistan, the 36th player to play for the West Indies in this format of ODI. And he ended against India in 1991. West Indies won 44 and lost just 12 matches, winning 12 and drawing 7 of the 19 series of tests he played in. He was still at school when his fellow Jamaican Lawrence Rowe was at his peak, which had a distinct influence in his classical style of batting. Two of Dujon's test entries were scored on the slow turning pitch at the Queen's Park Oval the second against Pakistan and Abdul Qadir in 1988. Another was scored on the contrasting fast and bouncy surface at Perth, Australia. 
Playing squash was his main form of preparation since he felt it was a game played at a quick pace which exercised all parts of his body, helping him with speed off the mark, building good reflexes and giving him the ability to change direction quickly. Three skills needed while wicketkeeping to fast bowling. He rates Malcolm Marshall as the best fast bowler he kept wicket to and Vivian Richards as the best batsman he played with. Tactically, he felt that targeting the opposing captain, who was usually a batsman, was a tactic that the West Indies fast bowlers came up with, as they felt that if the leader's confidence was low, it could seep into other parts of his game. He has stated that the Kerry Packer revolution helped the West Indies realize its true potential, bringing a bunch of talented individuals to a level of fitness that before they never had essentially creating the conditions for West Indies to go to another level. That was when they got Dennis Waite as a fitness trainer and performance levels went up hugely. They became fitter, stronger and faster. Dujon was one of five West Indian, sorry, five wisdom cricketers of the year in 1989 and since retiring as a player in 1992, has worked as an assistant coach to the West Indies national team and in development of young cricket players in his native Jamaica, as well as becoming a respected cricket commentator. He was also a prime mover behind the formation of the West Indies Players Association. Well, we've come to an end of another segment of West Indies Legends in Cricket. We hope that you have enjoyed another in the series. In the next episode, we will be taking a look at Roy Federicks of Guyana, the exciting opening batsman. Once again, I thank you for viewing. You can see this on our previous shows on our Cricket 360 Facebook page. Until next time, 